Hello and welcome back to No Bullshit. Today we turn back to talking about Dave Chappelle and how his latest comedy special on Netflix is still making waves in the media. Last week we talked about how a silly SJW writer on a now laughable online magazine said that Dave Chappelle's special wasn't worth people's time. Well, I have to say, I finally watched it myself since then and I wholeheartedly disagree, even more than before. In fact, I would even say that Dave Chappelle's Sticks and Stones special is one of the greatest. And it's not only the best comedy you're going to see this year, but also, this could turn out to be one of the greatest stand-up specials of all time. I'm actually a little surprised it was even released on a constantly failing platform like Netflix, but hey, I guess that's why they say even a broke clock is right twice a day. Dave's special ended up not only being wildly funny, it was also really relevant too. And quite frankly, in many ways, I felt like Chappelle was talking to us the entire time. Many of the same ideas and themes that we discuss here on No Bullshit were also brought up in this stand-up special. Dave the growing cancel culture out there, of course being led by far leftists and social justice warriors. He also talked about a lot of the more obnoxious and troubling parts of the LGBTQIA communities, which Dave jokingly called the alphabet people. And then, speaking of nicknames, Chappelle's bits about the Jesse Smollett story were absolutely fantastic, and they were made all the funnier when he purposely mispronounced the guy's already silly name as Juicy Smollett. Pretty hilarious. Yes, Dave Chappelle's new special exceeded all all my expectations, and they were honestly pretty high to begin with too. And apparently many others agree with this too, since I've only seen positive reviews and opinions on this special, mostly. Well, at least from real people and legitimate sources. The fans, the viewers, and actual comedians themselves, everyone who's not politically motivated loved what Dave did here. For example, Norm MacDonald, one of the greatest comedians alive right now, he has even been seen giving Dave mad props for another very successful show all over the internet. Here, Norm replies to some guy named Kevin who supposedly had mixed feelings about sticks and stones. Norm tweets this, Kevin, I'm surprised at your reaction to the Chappelle special. Did you think it was funny or not? The correct answer is that it was incredibly funny, of course. Take it from a pro, Polly. Well put, Norm. And you gotta admit, if anyone knows good comedy, it's Norm McFrickin' Donald. And come to find out, the guy he's replying to here is actually a senior entertainment reporter for the Daily Beast. What a joke. You can't make this kind of shit up. This Kevin Fallon guy is supposed to be in charge of reporting entertainment at his company. But he doesn't even have the common sense to realize that Chappelle is one of the best in the game right now. And to make matters worse, if you look into Kevin's article that's attached to this tweet that Norm is replying to, well, Kevin's reasons for having mixed feelings about Chappelle are because the topics of his special offended him. Apparently Dave joking around about all the false and very late allegations going around out there, those are taboo topics according to Kev. Basically, this so-called entertainment reporter is playing the joke police on comedians. Because according to him, it's wrong if they don't toe the line with current modern day politically correct culture and SJW messages. So clearly there's a big divide we can start to see here. The actual fans, viewers, and other comics, we all agree that Dave Chappelle's special is hilarious. Sure, it's irreverent, sometimes offensive, and even dark and gritty, but it's also very witty. And having comics that make edgy jokes is what that industry used to be all about. Sure, there are new waves of G-rated, politically correct comedians out there too, and some of the pro SJWs are even funny at times as well, but over-the-top, in-your-face, Chappelle-like humor still reigns supreme. Some are even saying Dave Dave is one of the last real comics still out there, and I have to say, I definitely agree. Besides maybe the aforementioned Norm MacDonald and a small handful of others, there's really not many big names left in the comedy world. Not after it's been sterilized and criticized and attempted to be taken down by SJWs. So thank God for people like Dave and Norm who are still trying, and they're doing their best to give the world a darker sense of humor that we yearn for. And they're bringing us that humor despite being attacked, dismissed, and sometimes railroaded, or even deplatformed by the radical leftists running the mainstream media, the internet, and many major corporations too. But this is only the beginning of today's story. Another issue that was developing related to Dave's special was its score on Rotten Tomatoes, the movie and TV review site. Now, we've known that Rotten has been biased and corrupted for a long while now, especially when they totally changed their site's formula and audience ratings in response to the negative backlash when the movie Captain Marvel was released. Before that movie came out in March, Rotten would take polls on movies 
letting people vote on whether or not they wanted to see them. This tradition was stopped then, though, when things started to go downhill for the Captain Marvel score. In an obvious attempt for them to shield this pro-SJW movie from the growing criticisms from the public, well, Rotten Tomatoes began to hide that score and change their whole voting system entirely. And now, this time, while it's not a dramatic change to the website, but Rotten Tomatoes is still showing some more of its usual shenanigans, as they try and hide the overly good scores and reactions to Dave Chappelle. This side of the story started off with Dave getting a 0% score with the critics there. And this held for a short time too, but then it eventually bumped up to 17%, and finally, it's sitting at 38 at the time of this video's production. And that's still pretty low if you ask me. This special is easily an 8 or 9 out of 10, without question. And if you look at the audience score next to the critic score, it reflects that too, since the audience have given Dave Chappelle 99%, an almost completely positive rating. Wow, what a disconnect between the media and actual people like us. And keep in mind, while I do realize comedy is largely subjective, and people don't always have the same sense of humor, of course, but when you're a critic on Rotten Tomatoes or anywhere, you kind of get to choose yourself what you watch, review, and critique. So basically, these so-called critics are here just to show up and shit on Dave, probably because he's anti-politically correct. Only eight of these bozos even bothered voting on this poll anyway, so it really does go to show the kinds of people who are reviewing and working in the media networks these days. They're anti-comedy, pro-PC, SJW party poopers who wouldn't know a good joke if it came and slapped them in the face. In fact, if a joke did that to them, these leftists would probably sue them for sexual harassment, and then they would deplatform the joke everywhere online, even getting their banks to drop them and have their jobs taken away too. Needless to say, leftists in the media don't have a sense of humor, clearly, and they don't know how to take a joke at all either. Next, let's dive further into this and see what these haters have to say about Dave Chappelle. Here, a writer named Inku Kang writes, The special is like dropping in on a rascally uncle who doesn't know or doesn't care how much he's disappointing you. And this girl writes for Slate Magazine, guys, and she's also a top critic for Rotten Tomatoes. She must really know what she's talking about. Hashtag sarcasm. And look at this attached article with her review. This SJW girl's full review of Dave reads like it was written by Dave himself, as a joke he was making to make fun of PC people in the media like her. She's basically beyond parody. Her article says, Dave Chappelle's Sticks and Stones fights for the rights of the already powerful. In his new Netflix special, Chappelle rushes to the defense of the people who need it most, celebrities, sensing she has a bit of sarcasm in her bit too. But really, I'm not buying this whole activist angle here. Comedy isn't about fighting for anyone's rights, lady. It's about comedians commenting on the world around them and giving their opinions on it in entertaining ways. If this writer had her own way, Dave wouldn't even be telling funny jokes at all. You know this kind of SJW would insist on only making fun of Trump or something, or making fun of other conservatives who really, largely, have done nothing wrong. We're surely not as big an issue as, say, people pushing hate crime hoaxes like Jesse Smollett, and that shitty story that he made up about getting attacked by Trump supporters in Chicago in the middle of the night in winter, well, that Jesse Smollett story was already sounding like a comedy sketch to begin with. So of course Chappelle is going to make some goofs on that story, instead of goofing on whatever baloney these leftists would prefer him to. Next, Allison Herman comments on the special saying this, Sticks and Stones is designed to generate inflammatory coverage. It's a symbiotic cycle with no end in sight, and it's become the last thing a beloved provocateur should ever want to be, predictable. Well, I definitely greatly disagree. Do I think Dave realized this kind of special would cause controversy though? Well, sure, of course. He's a smart guy who's been around the block too, and he knows what he's doing, so I'm sure Dave did create a product that he knew would get a lot of attention like this. But did he necessarily design it solely to generate inflammatory coverage in the media? Not at all. I'm sure Chappelle designed his show to be as funny and relevant as possible. And sure, a lot of the material was not politically correct and seemingly offensive, but that's mostly because Dave was mocking reporters like this one half of the time. Just because SJWs in the media have become so predictable, we can now troll them and have them take this bait with ease, that doesn't mean we're wrong or being offensive for no reason other than to piss people off. Really, we're trying to call you guys out for being the worst of the worst out there. You're anti-American, anti-free speech, and anti-fun. And the SJWs are social and cultural vampires too, who also become the worst kinds of authoritarians and power-hungry freaks every time they get in charge of anything. And nothing exposes that more than this past couple of weeks. And this huge, large, and gaping disconnect between the media and the public being exposed by Dave Chappelle. This writer then has an attached article of her own called Dave Chappelle's Provocations Have Turned Predictable. After his fifth Netflix special, in Sticks and Stones, the renowned comic is becoming harder and harder to romanticize. And I, of course, again,
again, strongly disagree. In my opinion, Dave is more relevant now than ever, and he's bounced back in with some great material in such a wonderful way, I have actually begun to romanticize the guy and his career even more than ever. As for his provocation supposedly becoming predictable, I also disagree. But let's give this writer a chance and just say yes, Dave is predictable right now in some ways. For the sake of argument, I'll admit, Chappelle is predictable now, but it's not in any bad way whatsoever. Really, Dave is predictable in the best kinds of ways. He's predictably funny, hilarious, smart, and thoughtful. And Dave predictably delivers on his projects, and he gives the world lasting humor which many millions enjoy. So yeah, Chappelle is predictable when you put it that way. Dave's predictable like how the sun setting is, or how the moon cycles are. Basically, my point is, predictable isn't always bad like what's implied here. In fact, predictable can be much better than the opposite. Being unpredictable might have some allure, and I'm sure this writer is trying to imply that art and artists should need to have surprises and twists and creative originality in their works too, but Dave Chappelle has all of that as well. And so his predictable provocations are still very much welcomed and enjoyed by many. In the end, most of these bad reviews of Chappelle aren't stemming from the actual special the critics are supposed to be reacting to. Actually, they're coming in with a hate and disdain for the man himself. Because they're SJW losers who are triggered because Dave doesn't play by their rules. That's why they've been forced to come up with bogus, made-up, unintelligible reasons. As to why they rated his show so low, yes, once again, the left is attacking something they don't like, by lying and making shit up about it. Because if they went after Dave and his show directly, there wouldn't be much to say or disagree with. The guy made a hilarious special that most honest viewers all enjoyed, including other major world-renowned comedians. And this large, glowing, positive reception of his show, of course, starkly contrasts the low and negative responses from the mainstream media. So nothing proves that the news is more out of touch than ever than this story, especially in terms of entertainment, media, and comedy. What do you guys think? Are you going to watch the Dave Chappelle special yourself? If you already watched it, did you think it was funny? Or was it disappointing and predictable, like how these critics claim? Comment your thoughts on everything below, and thanks for watching No Bullshit. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you all next time.